Love Podcast e non siete del Podcast! Hey! 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 That's worse than pooping. I'm gonna call it out. Sean's, like got, Sean's got no heat for that noise. <laughs> <laughs> that is so much It's a lot quieter over there. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, that was awful. What'd you call it? Well, I said it was worse than the whooping. I don't know the noise for yeah. it. Hooting and hollering, I call that. <laughs> <laughs> Having a gay old time. Yeah. Sean Hickey, as always, is here. Uh, excuse me. Hard labor. Hardly ever here. <laughs> no, no. Rarely seen, but always here. <laughs> Two in a row. Yeah. Two in a row, though. That is right, yeah. 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 And Ava. Santina. Hi. Mostly here. We wanted Laura, but... She's too, yeah. big, too, big, too big time for us to please this. <laughs> Absolutely. She's not even in the room. Skyping off work to go on K Burley. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> That's not true. She's here. <laughs> Although she did very well on K Burley. How are we all? Yeah, good. Fabulous, yeah. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Excellent. Um, for those wondering why... I'm wearing the football top. I was on Football Joe's new podcast, Football Trending, this morning, which I'm not, not I'm addressing the listeners, not you two. <laughs> but um, that should be out now if anyone wants to go and watch that. Keep my hot takes about it's already football. out. I think it'll be out, it'll be out this, by the time this comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm pretty sure on the Football Joe YouTube channel. Mm. Get some hot takes about Saudi Arabia. The beautiful game, yeah? The beautiful game and the beautiful country of Saudi Arabia. What, what were you, pro? More intervention or? <laughs> <laughs> More uh, fewer hands in Saudi Arabia is my yeah. Well, you know what they say about fingers in pies, don't you? <laughs> Can it, never enough. I don't know. <laughs> they don't eat pie in Saudi Arabia. They must do. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> if that wasn't, ah, yes, that Saudi if, if, if that was an idiom, what would that mean? They don't eat pies in Saudi Arabia. It would mean get your money out of Manchester City. <laughs> 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 what is football? <laughs> uh, should we talk bloody WhatsApp? Yeah. What the bloody hell's going on with WhatsApp, Eva? Um, so the government today have set up a new WhatsApp channel that's going to communicate uh, important information directly to your phone. So you can join a broadcast channel on WhatsApp. And so if there's a new cost of living payment or a new PIP payment, that sort of thing, they're going to tell you directly to your phone. But it's not, is it as specific as that? Well, apparently, according to the, when I clicked on the gov.uk link that explained it, that's what it told me. So you... I don't think it's just, it's it's a, it's a town crier um, format, but so far on the broadcast channel we've got um, we've got a, a little sticker of a, do, do you know what I've done what you did I don't know where the fuck it's gone <laughs> why is it so difficult we were really to find? struggling to find the broadcast channel thing on WhatsApp today oh, it is um, a crier isn't it the sticker oh have you got it yeah I've got it here hey WhatsApp we've arrived from now on. If there's information you need to know from the UK government, we'll WhatsApp you and then a crier. Do you know what this? What I'm concerned about? What information do they need us to know so quickly that it needs to be straight to our phones? We're doing we a great job. We can't wait for the breaking news alerts or a tweet. It needs to be, citizen, mm. we are under attack. They're trying to get, get into, into the that game, maybe. Into the, the push notification news game by yeah. just going straight to us. Do you think that it's got something to do with Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser today, who believes that the BBC is too biased? So now they can't go via the BBC to tell us <laughs> important things. They're just going to tell us. Just on WhatsApp groups. Yeah. But what I don't understand, and look, we haven't got any messages from them yet, so apart from that one. So I could be proven completely wrong. But can you do pro-government announcements under the guise of sorry, pro-conservative party policy announcements under the umbrella of government, particularly if you're moving into an election period. Like I just would say, that seems a bit odd to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I suppose it's, is it, it's the same question about the, the, the official UK government Twitter account, I suppose any kind of policy announcements is the same, it comes under the same criticism. Yeah. Um, what I don't understand is there's a limited number of emojis you can react to on the government messages what is the point of the who's cry laughing reacting to a government announcement of policy i might they might send something funny like <laughs> <laughs> like oh we're putting up national insurance again there is also a sad <laughs> face isn't there? there is sad face yeah there's a, I think there's a thumbs up yeah there's there's not a all the dads are applying. everyone's dad yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uk government Thanks. whatsapp okay okay <laughs> um yeah it's stupid and also uh it got everyone talking about the deleted WhatsApps again. Yeah. From the COVID inquiry, etc. Yeah. Which is very silly from them. 
I like tweeting something and I like it when everyone else just redoes my tweet. <laughs> are, you not even, are you claiming credit for the joke? Yeah, I am actually. I, was, I know you can I was real quick on it. Yeah, but I was fastest finger probably first. Probably the on first that. one. Yeah. But equally, I think I think it's parallel inspiration. Yep. Okay, but when you're in a game of say the chase, <laughs> <laughs> what matters? Speed or accuracy? Accuracy in the chase. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the speed is fastest fingers who wants to be a millionaire. Okay, well, um, what about in no? Who wants to be a millionaire? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to who wants to be a millionaire. You do need to be quick, don't you? Yeah, you, you do find the A B C D. Yeah. 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 Mm. So there you go. Oh, so exactly. So everyone apologised to Ava for nicking your tweet. Would you rather be what? What game? Okay. What game show would you most likely to be? want to be on Sean Tipping Point fuck off what's Tipping Point Tipping Point, point. Yeah. it's so boring I love Tipping that's Point that's insane me it's and like... whenever I go home me and my mum have this thing of like an hour before dinner time just sit and watch ITV because we get that over there mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and huh? you don't thank us enough for that <laughs> <laughs> tell you what Do you get Ireland that just isn't bloody grateful enough for the cultural product um, but we the one thank you for Paul Mescal every day. <laughs> Wait, can you just talk us the terrestrial channels? So what's on? So one? back before Freeview, number one and two would have been RT one and two. Right, and I then think three. Three is TV three. That makes sense. Four is TG Cahar, which is the Irish language station. Five, I think, was Channel Four. Funnily enough, D that's mental. Yeah, it doesn't make but any sense. But also, you can, that's you can, actually. yeah. <laughs> but you, yeah. you can actually, can't you, like, change the channel that a certain no channel is going to be on? No one's doing that. Sure. Well, back in the day, you were able to do oh, that. Oh, put on Channel Four. It's on five. That's <laughs> who came up with that. <laughs> Six, I think, was ITV, and then seven and eight were BBC One and Two. Six to me doesn't feel right for ITV. Mm -hmm. Six no. is ITV Two, isn't it? You'd have RT One on Six, probably, would you? What, would I have RT1 or yeah, 6? Well, and you're the worst for it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get dust, was it dust in the turkey? I get oh, enough yeah. Stephen Nolan. Any of him. Mm, the den. Shout out to all the Irish listeners who uh -huh. would have watched the den at some point. Absolutely. Let's shout out to the two Johnnies. Yeah. <laughs> very good work. Um, tipping point, when you asked about that earlier, it's the worst one. It's, you know those arcade it's machines the best. where you put in like 10p and you have to kind of push mm. them. So it's that. But there's also a quiz element as well. That sounds it's presented sick. by But there's a narrative around yeah, that. that. You know, it's, like it's, you can you can judge the so idiocy boring. of the contestant by which drop zone they're going for. You know? Like there is strategy to no it outside skill. of There's the no trivia. skill involved in that. Oh come on. There's no skill in that. No, I disagree. Sheer luck. I disagree. Also presented by Ben Shepherd, which that says it all. I like Ben Shepherd. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I said to <laughs> I was being so boring this morning. <laughs> I, said, you I just I was watching the new presenter on ITVs this morning. Just wanted to see, you know, how's mm -hmm. the new presenter getting on because they've really struggled to fill that role. <laughs> I turned to Ed and I said, She's getting on really well on this. <laughs> and Ed was like, Sorry, are you talking to me about this morning? <laughs> I think I said, I, like I, a I, duck to water is shan. <laughs> I think I said, I literally don't care with my, with my response. Yeah. Mm. You um, should. I don't think you should. Anyway, should yeah, tipping we, point is the best one. That's also not true. Ava, hey, what would you be on if you were a, a quiz panelist? Deal or no deal, I reckon. But well, only if it's, back, yeah, but only if it's with Noel Edmonds. Edwards. What's his name? Edmonds. Yeah. Edmonds. <laughs> yeah. He lives in Australia now, I think. New Zealand. New Zealand. And he has a farm. Vineyard or a farm? There's someone else who's got who's moved to the States and has a trout farm. Really? Yeah. That's Ollie Dugmore. Is it? <laughs> That's why he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, should we do mortgages, Ava? Yeah. You're obsessed with mortgages. Well, yeah, you know. Would you like to talk us through what's going on? <laughs> what you don't have, you fetishize, I guess. I don't know. Is that a thing? <laughs> Is that how fetish works? <laughs> I don't know. Fingers in pies, something like that. <laughs> no pies in mortgages. That's the thing. Mm, that's um, the Saudi say. Sean doesn't have any feet. That's why. So this was a story that came out in the Sunday papers. And so the Independent are reporting that Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt in the, well, preparing for the budget and also preparing for an election are thinking about offering or considering offering mortgages with a 1% deposit. And this is to incentivize younger people to get onto the ladder. So that would mean if you wanted to buy a 300,000 pound home, you would uh, put down 3,000 pounds, which is affordable, particularly at a time when people can't afford to put um, 
to save for a deposit while they're also paying for their rent. But this would be great for the market because obviously if a lot more people are trying to buy, mm. that is good. However, there isn't the supply to meet the demand. Simple economics then. There's a hell of mm. a lot of people who will have, well, I mean, even, you know, a £250,000 property, a lot of people will have two and a half grand or you could even get quite a nice little Sainsbury's loan for that amount of money. You know what I'm saying? But Other mortgage brokers are available. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not giving advice because you're not allowed to do that. Mm. And I'm also not trained to give advice. Good. Don't so, visit advice. Yeah, now I'm just doing caveats. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. If you want to go and fucking do this, do this. <laughs> um, hypotheticals. Um, th there are no houses. Yeah, that's the main flaw with this, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's not that people can't afford the houses. Or well, is that as well? But the main thing is there are none. No, but also they can't afford the houses because there are none, right? Because the yes. price has been driven up so mm -hmm. astronomically because of the constriction on supply. Yeah, it's it's. But also the person who would be buying the average UK house price two hundred eighty eight thousand mm. pounds. I'd imagine the person who is trying to buy that would have a hell of a lot more <coughs> of a deposit than twenty eight hundred pounds in the first place. Yeah, yeah, you know, just going off of. But also, wages. They, they wouldn't be going for for that. I mean, if you're in a major city, that is, mm -hmm. yeah, what you'd be paying. But if you're looking for a first home, like you know, there are there, there are plenty of places in Liverpool, plenty of places in Oxfordshire, even not not uh, Cotswolds, but one side, um, where you can buy houses for you know eighty nine grand, and so you would need what, and that can't be right. Eight hundred and ninety pound deposit. Yeah. They're giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually too generous. I think this is a great idea. I think this is the it is radical, but it's radical in the wrong way. They've identified a symptom mm -hmm. or a cause, but it's not the right one. Mm -hmm. As the, the the real thing to do would be build the four million houses that are, that we need in the UK. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, both. I think it needs to happen together. So I think they need to build the houses. And then on those new houses that they're building, they shouldn't allow buy to lets on them. They shouldn't allow landlords to buy them and yeah. rent them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should offer one percent mortgages, which are government back loans essentially, on all new builds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would say something like, Okay, we're gonna commission hypothetically Barrett Homes to build four thousand houses in this area. If you're a young person, you can put your name down for this house and we'll just need a one percent deposit to secure it. That would be a good system. Mm -hmm. And then this actually ties in quite nicely to, I was in North Norfolk last week, in, which is the oldest place in Britain. Do you know what old people have? Hell of a lot of houses. Mm. Yeah. So they I was wondering, them. so um, I was there asking for advice for young people like me on how to buy a house. And do you know what they said? Stop buying coffee, man. <laughs> well, no, actually, well, some people did say that, but most of them were like, oh no, they, well, they can't, they're fucked. There's nothing, there's nothing to buy. It was a lot of, um, I think a lot of people were commenting on the video which you can watch on the Politics Show YouTube channel. Um, they were surprised at how kind of empathetic the older generation was towards young people and their plight. And they were, they recognised how uniquely lucky they were in being able to get a house with a two grand deposit or something like that. Mm. You know what's interesting about that? I'm sure these people might be, I'm not saying that they necessarily fall into this category, the uh, middle class people have now become sympathetic to the young person's plight because they've realised that they actually can't afford to put up the deposit for their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one one part of it, isn't that is, it? Yeah. I think that's, good. that's an interesting point. I don't, I'm not sure that applies to everyone I spoke to, but I think that's definitely yeah. part of it. But also people like, people like recognise um, there was some discussion about people, kind of the older generation or older commentators lambasting people our age for and younger for buying takeaway coffees or avocado on toast. And they, this woman made the point about single parents. What do single parents do? Single parents are forking out for children and their family, keeping a roof over multiple people's heads. And there's people, it's people like that who aren't really spoken about in terms of being able to, in terms of housing, it's mostly young professionals, young, more affluent younger people are the main focus of homeownership and house building and stuff. Which mm. thought, I think it was interesting that it was an older person who identified that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because we can't see it. We can't see the wood through the trees. Yeah. I, or like, as in, I think, well, we're so blinkered by our own experiences, I suppose. Yeah. Too I'm busy horsing avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, it, it is absolutely extraordinary that you, by the time, you know, I think a lot of the stats are off 
for, do you know, like the ONS came out and they said 40% of um, people's pay packet is going on their rent mm. um, in, in London. I just think to myself, like, I know people in this very room <laughs> who are paying more than that of their, mm-hmm. their take home pay mm-hmm. on their rent. It just feels really out of touch. Most people that upstairs, I mean, I've spoken to a few people who are paying like £950 for a shared room. Shared, sorry, excuse me, shared house. A room in a, yeah, room, like, room in a shared to, house, sorry. They're all bunking in one apartment. <laughs> getting nine, if you're paying £950 for that, I think that's on you. How much, point, how much do you think it is to stay in one of those, uh, that farm that Jordan Peterson once put on Twitter? What for? What <laughs> Just, farm? Oh, the milking farm. Yeah. Oh, this is the, this is Jordan Peterson fell for, it, it was like porn, it was like fetish, like a guy was getting his, cock sucked by a robot or something like that. He was like, it's a milking farm. <laughs> and he was like, this is a Chinese milking farm. <laughs> <laughs> and you're asking how much it would cost to go there. <laughs> yeah. A blank check for... No, I meant you get money off. What? If that's your renting situation. <laughs> <laughs> if you're being harvested. Yeah. If you're being milked for the next generation. If you're like... La- if your landlord is sucking you off with a Hoover, you get ten percent off. Mm. That's it. That's the rule. Constantly, <laughs> <laughs> you're attached to a Hoover for the entire month <laughs> to pay four hundred quid. That's the rent. Because you, you get to you go get to no work, work done. <laughs> <laughs> No, presumably you go to work and you come home. You go to sure, work. Yeah. You go to work, rest. It's the eight eight eight. Build up your system. It? Go back in the door, plug in, mm. and in comes Nunu to suck you off. <laughs> yeah, eight hours work, eight hours sleep, <laughs> eight hours Nunu. <laughs> oh god! This is the future. The woke world has swung. <laughs> <laughs> Which way, Western man? <laughs> We're getting dangerously close to that topic of discussion that happened. Was it about this time last year on Twitter? What one? That was <laughs> the girl. She's going in a loop now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the girl who did um, the girl who made her boyfriend nut eight times. <laughs> <laughs> The context of this is some woman tweeted something about I'm gonna make my man's nut eight times before he leaves the house in the morning. My man cannot cheat. <laughs> my man is always satisfied. Because <laughs> he's physically exhausted. And then it was Dr. Shola, who is an um, esteemed commentator. Um, still she yeah. she quote tweeted it and said <laughs> If he wants to cheat, he'll cheat between the fifth and sixth nut. <laughs> While yourself, he's still in the house. Get yourself a nunu and then <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Imagine. Uh, uh, your friend's flat. <laughs> You're like, he's just gone like a skeleton. <laughs> he's, just, he's plugged in in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't this much. Is, <laughs> this is the future, <laughs> but it's not as liberals want. Yeah. Do, even go, do you think we can start? We can start this as like a conspiracy theory about like they're giving men pills to make them trans. It's either that or they get new new. <laughs> <laughs> what the the pills to make you trans are also going to give you a discount on your rent. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah they're, trans, the, trans the people get the a discount on rent. Do you reckon yeah. we could get this into the Telegraph that some people Should are part of like <laughs> fertility farms to get a discount on their rent? Should we write, should we write into the Telegraph and see? <laughs> Sir, <laughs> I come bearing bad news from Bedford. <laughs> I visited my son's flat <laughs> recently. <laughs> And I imagine my shock <laughs> as I walk in to see him being sucked off by someone from the Teletubbies. <laughs> it would have seen by Jordan Peterson. <laughs> He's like on a preacher's desk at the front. Just I know in we tears. Have, yeah. like, I, know young, I know young people aren't having children, but this does not seem like the answer. Yeah. Oh, should we talk about something else now rather than noonooing? 1% mortgages, what do you think? Pro or con? Pro, but it's a sticking plaster over it. Uh, open seeping wound <laughs> mm-hmm. you can see the bone on the wound absolutely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Is it seeping or open? <laughs> it's both. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not careful. <laughs> Nuno's going to come for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nuno, Nuno's programming isn't strong enough to recognise different fluids. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, it's a good idea in theory, but ultimately people who are, realistically, everyone isn't going to be buying a, a house that's less than 300 grand. You're spending five, 600 grand in a house and you get a 6,000 pound deposit on it. You're paying that for well into your retirement your mm. kids are paying it as well they're not they're if you have two kids they're going to be fighting over that house who's paying the mortgage on it <laughs> it's not still <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I, try, I tried to make a point but Nunu's still in my head <laughs> and Nunu's under the desk but you know what I mean like it, it, it'll, it'll just carry into generation after generation until the point where you've got the generation after this one being 40 or 50 years old, then having a 1% deposit on their house. Yeah. That they're still paying a mortgage on the last house yeah. and paying a second mortgage. <clears throat> but what might happen is there's been a groundswell of people getting quite angry and I, everything is making me think of that fucking... <laughs> okay, there's been a groundswell of anger from uh, people under 40 who can't put together a deposit because they're paying for their rent um, and they've become quite vocal, right? Once you make them a part of the asset class, they'll go away. They will come, then they'll be a bit more quiet. So you've got a good, you've probably got a good 30 years in that. So it's someone else's problem. It's another yeah. government's problem. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but then the problem is, so I was reading this morning that the average London house has um, gone up by £200,000 in the past shit i should have remembered how long <laughs> 200 it's gone up 200 grand i think it was five years mm, fucking hell so i'll have to check it um so, uh, some amount of time some amount of time that's extraordinary um it could have been 10 years mm. i could have checked this before but well, my look, head from is x period to y period anyway it's gone so in <laughs> insert dates here yeah during some point in time the London house has increased into by 200,000 pounds. Mm. But when you're, that bubble has to burst at some point, right? You can't get to a, Sorry. what about? You can't, you know, it's got to get to a point where, because if it keeps increasing at the rate it is, you're going to start paying a million pounds for a one bedroom shit flat. And Might that, I interest you in a new bubble, bigger than the last one? Yeah. <laughs> Just envelope. <laughs> the Absolutely. old bubble before it bursts yeah and let that get bigger and then a bigger bubble follows that yeah right seems Sweet. like that's what's happened up until this point now after 2008 sticking so. plasters over everything mm. I suppose. Yeah. yeah speaking of owning things shall we talk about susan hall and nick ferrari today that was a good, good segue. segue thank you i've been thinking about that sitting on that for about a minute and a half have you is that why <laughs> yeah. you suddenly got quite agitated when i was talking then because you knew it no was that, was me, that was me thinking about nunu <laughs> <laughs> that was that. okay um, so moving on from nunu said uh, speaking of susu <laughs> <laughs> the tory uh, london mayor candidate susan hall was on nick ferrari on lbc this morning and she was showing her arse on this and how shit she is as a candidate um shall we do the clip yeah. Roll the clip. Who owns That's the bridge, ready. Susan Hall? Well, it's between the two the two councils, uh, apparently. There's, it's not very clear. But at the end of the day, what, the mayor should, is in what? charge of London. And if things are not working, they have to step in. Well, I'm a bit disappointed by this response because it shows a basic factual misunderstanding of the case. The bridge doesn't belong to two councils. It only belongs to one council, which is Hammersmith and Fulham. Can I just say one thing? Well, I will not. Wrong, haven't you? I will not promise anything unless I know where the money is coming from. What's He's a copper earn? Um, I think they're on about, I think they start at, I think they start about 30 something and it goes up from there. Right, so you're, I'd, see, I'd, you're I seeking to recruit more officers. Yeah. You don't actually know how much they earn. I think they cost us, a, 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 a Bobby cost about 60K with the ongoing cost. Don't forget, it's not their, just their wages. S sorry, 60,000 pounds? I think you have to estimate around 60K because of their pensions and everything oh, else. Yeah. But what's the yeah. starting salary? Um, I don't I don't know what the one is now. They're being don't given a 5%. Oh, I probably should know what nurses earn and teachers All right, earn. All it's 36,000 pounds. So how are you going to get more? Right, so there is a problem with recruitment. I would suggest it's because... 
police are being so bad mouthed in London. Would you alter bus fares? It, you're going back to finance. But again. what is the bus fare? How much do you pay to get on a bus currently? I don't use them. I use trains all the time. You don't know what a bus fare is? No. Susan, you don't know who owns Hammersmith Bridge, you don't know what a police officer makes, and you don't know the bus I fare. said to you in the 30s, as you, as you full well know. Yeah, um, she seems dreadful as a candidate. Yeah. What, Eva, what are, your, what are your thoughts on Susan Hall and the Conservatives' chances in the mayoral election? I just wonder why mm-hmm. the Conservatives, or when the Conservatives, gave up on the mayoral race altogether. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because... They're not even, they're not even trying. They're not no. even betting this woman. You could have you could have gone her. to Trafalgar Square four a.m. on a Friday and found someone better than Susan Hall. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's an aspect of it of just putting forward shit candidates to hope that Labour are going to keep putting Sadiq Khan forward so they can continue to demonise him in some way? That yes, uh-huh. hypothesis. London is extremely expensive to run, extremely expensive. Mm. Um, TfL is it sucks at the coffers, right? Mm. Would you want to have a conservative government and a conservative mayoral candidate? Because then, when things happen like oh, TfL needs another thirty million pounds in funding, oh, bloody conservative-led London is mm. the bloody conservative-led yeah, government yeah, yeah. too. It's much better to say mm. Labour, Labour-led London. It's like forecasting a year ahead now, right? Where Keir Starmer is going to be the prime minister, Sadiq Khan is going to be the mayor. And they're like, you nothing have it is, all. <laughs> yeah, nothing is changing. Sadiq can't blame the Conservative government anymore. He can't blame Keir Starmer. That's an attack line for the Conservatives but he, to have. I think you still, you, you, I think you absolutely can blame the Conservatives still because you can say, well, they were in charge for thirteen years, and this is month six. Yeah, but then like, they sure. say, I think you, you, he's in charge of a few of his own budgets and he spent look, it all on, you know, he he pissed up the wall by spending it on things like, I don't know, free primary school meals. <laughs> New news for all. <laughs> <into the combination>. <laughs> <laughs> he had the first new news. <laughs> Do you know what, what I liked about this interview with Nick Ferrari? is the contempt Nick Ferrari showed for Susan Hall and her lack of seriousness mm. as a candidate, which I actually think needs to be extended to the wider Conservative Party instead of political journalists. Just indulge them. Mm. Just indulge the five families and pretend they're important. They're not important. They're fucking nobodies. They're going to have nothing to do with anything in six months, nine months, whatever. You are making yourself look like an idiot by mm. giving Mark Francois a fucking press conference. None of the people, no one takes him seriously. He's not important anymore. The mm. Spartan Brexit debates are done. It's only important within the Conservative Party itself, which is a very insular debate within the wider United Kingdom. Mark Francois is going to have no bearing on the outcome of the country beyond 2024. And the political journalism, the lobby in the country, needs to move on beyond interviewing right-wing Tory MP who has no, no opinions in common with the average person on the street. Mm. They're just letting them rant and rave or whatever. And it dictates... <clears throat> the wider media apparatus as well. And I think it's, I, I think you, you need to start treating these people with contempt if they are contemptible. I think Nick Ferrari is excellent at this. Mm-hmm. Okay, go off it. Eh? Yeah, I was like, what's Mark Francois <laughs> yeah. done to you? He's, fucking, <laughs> he's a loser. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you how quickly allowed. you just picked Mark Francois <laughs> well, out he's of the, the bunch. Well, he's one like, <laughs> you know, during the, fi- the five families bullshit, be like, yeah. Mark Francois is having a press conference. You don't need to go. Yeah. You don't need yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah. If, if it was just like, <laughs> fucking backbench DUP MP is having a, f- a press conference. There would be like <laughs> journalists <laughs> fighting. Shut uh, down. You should <laughs> see him. He's like, yeah, I'm there every Sammy time. Wilson's <laughs> talking, boys. <laughs> the, the Avengers of the DUP are meeting today. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Star Chamber. And I love that little tidbit that won't leave my mind, which is they were meant to meet in uh, the Margaret Thatcher room, but then they couldn't get it booked out. Why do I know that? Yes, yeah. Why do I know that? Mm. So I think we talk, I, don't, I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast, but political journalists talk about Westminster and the things they talk about is as interesting as individual office politics. Mm-hmm. Being like, oh, window's broken. Yeah. Uh, it's I colour that I they just added really right enjoy that. that. So just... <laughs> no, <laughs> but you work there. Just, you you know, work there. Well, I mean, you know, I just, I just quite enjoy it. It's colour you, you add into like a daily article that ends up mm-hmm. being filler in a 200-page book that they write in five years' time. Yeah. You know. The window's broken. 
<laughs> and Mara Francois was uh, being new nude. <laughs> <laughs> With the five families <laughs> watching them. The five in New York. This dress was distracted by Mark first watching <laughs> Noon. Um, he was um he was particularly important during Brexit, after Brexit, you know, when it was the successive withdrawal um agree I can't even remember. It was a withdrawal agreement votes, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Successive votes. And he was the most important person. And do you know who else was? Was Marcus Fish, Anne Marie Trevelyan. Remember Steve Baker as well, right? Yes, yeah, Steve Baker. But names now, Steve Baker still you would care about, but names mm. now you'd go, whomst? Mm -hmm. But we gave them too much. And they're still and and they're, they still, they're still in that habit. They miss it. They're, yeah. still, they're still in political journalists are still in the habit of being like, Well, Mark Franz was here, let's get his opinion about mm -hmm. I mean, there's Nunes. there's two sides to it, isn't it? It's like we're we're Francois and the five <laughs> families and all this like this fluff that Westminster journalists do. That's one thing, but you could argue, I'm not going to be the one to argue it. He is a far more competent political operator than Susan Hall is. Like this is a monthly thing she does on LBC. I'd say ninety percent of Nick Ferrari's annoyance with it was that. It was the same thing it's last a, month. It was a waste of time. Yeah, every month <laughs> she comes with nothing, you know. Yeah. Like, she's just sat there waiting for a period. It's like glutton you know? for punishment. Mm. It must be quite brutal, but also be like just prep. <coughs> like, I have to say, I did think about it and I thought, oh God, I'm not actually sure if I know how much a bus fare is. I think if I had to guess, I would say it was like 175. But I think it is 175 up. now. Is is it? It? I think it used to be 150. That or 180. But that sounds bad, but you just sort of go in and tap, also, don't you? you? You're not going to be the mayor of London. You're not in control of it. You don't fucking know that. Well, you're not currently running to mayor of London. You don't know that. I think I, I think you'd have mentioned. I it. would actually just like to make a declaration that my official campaign to become London's night star is on. <laughs> it's open. Um, is that something you can be elected to? I don't know how it works, but all I know I is I want to be. It. Yeah, I would have thought it's a appointing. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. That's what. In well, I'd like to be appointed as it. The, the warehouse project guy is Manchester's. Yeah, I know mm. Sasha Lord. Yeah, he's great. That's mm -hmm. a good. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, but you see, I'm thinking less NIMBYs, more pubs. <laughs> Kill NIMBYs. Lower business rates. Um, Do we not think we have enough pubs in London? No, no, no. So licensing laws on, but right. but particularly as well, like quiet. So it's okay. So in central London, mm -hmm. you should be allowed to keep your pub open until twelve o'clock without anyone kicking off about it. If you are in central London, yeah. okay? Not residential area, central London. Mm. You chose to move there. The pub was already there. If you don't like the noise, move. Do Fuck you see? back to zone eight. And that's gonna be, <laughs> no, but truly, go, no, but go, move, go live in zone two or three. Just don't live in zone one, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Pretty simple. So that's the first port of call. Second. <laughs> no. The rest of these pages is just Ava's manifesto. Yeah. There's no other topics. No, no, no. Um, <coughs> let's do Jenrick. Yeah. Shall we talk Robbie J? Mm. A man who needs a good nunu. <laughs> Don't. Don't we all? Don't we all, right. brother? We're going to do this seriously, okay? Yeah, okay. So get all your nunu shit out of the way now. Okay. All right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what my wife says as I empty Nunu. <laughs> wife? <laughs> she empty Nunu. <laughs> wife now, yeah? Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, we got married. That's not true, listeners. I said that. I'm doing a character. You would not have a secret wedding. No, I wouldn't. Mm. You wouldn't. You'd want to you, you'd want to wear your little um tartan trousers. Yeah. <laughs> they were so nice. Uh, I do have quite nice tartan trousers. I rated them. I thought you were gonna call a kilt your little dress. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to do as well. Because beneath it there, Ava was kind of going like, it was quite a demeaning. Like. No, that was like a... <laughs> you just want to get that hog out on the day. It's like, it's too, my, the, the kilt is too short for my hog. <laughs> You'd left the new new strap like a <laughs> new, new walking me down the hands. aisle. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Finally being released. Oh. <laughs> Nunu has a tear in his eye. <laughs> Their eye. Her eye. What's Nunu's gender? <laughs> Are the tailors of his boys or girls? <laughs> we don't know. What's been this weird obsession with gender that you suddenly... I've read a few subreddits and um, uh, gender pilled. 
Right. Are you, sat- <laughs> are you satirizing the Telegraph's take on it? Is that what you're doing? I don't, what was the Telegraph's take, take on it? On being nuded. How did they get out? <laughs> How did they get out so quick? Right. We're doing Robert Jenrick now. Yeah, Robert Jenrick. Okay. Ava has done something silly. Oh, great. I'm glad you teed that up. <laughs> um, all right. So this is a story out today that dozens of MPs, including more than 40 Tories, have written to the Prime Minister demanding extra funding for councils in England to avoid big cuts to services. Now, obviously, we know that councils around the country are struggling at the moment. Several councils, including Nottingham, have just um, declared themselves approaching bankruptcy. Um that Croydon as well, bankrupt, a few others around the country. Now, one of these Tory MPs is none other than Robert Jenrick, who you might know from the Star Chamber <laughs> and <laughs> other listeners might know from, he's not actually in the Star Chamber, and other listeners might know as writing one of the amendments, the controversial amendments that several MPs uh, were going to vote for that could have sunk Rishi Sunak's Rwanda bill. When he was community secretary for quite a number of years, he was in control of the council budgets. So I don't quite understand why he didn't do something about it then. I'm just going to give you a few examples of times that he was asked to do something about it. So just play the first clip. I think one would have to proceed with caution before starting to uh, ring fence the funding for specific purposes, because I don't think that is what local councils themselves would wish. Uh, But we will consider whether we can give further guidance to councils as to uh, the areas of COVID-related expenditure, which we would expect central government uh, to fund. I think most councils would know that. Uh, in broad terms, they are the cost of social care, most obviously, uh, and that will be the largest cost. The uh, extra cost for housing to support rough sleepers, and there's been, as you know, a fantastic effort by councils to bring 90% or so of rough sleepers off the streets into uh, safer accommodation in hotels, and that does carry a cost. There's additional costs being borne by uh, the education functions within councils to protect uh, vulnerable children, for example, and we're working very closely with the Department for Education there. Um, and then there are some other costs being borne uh, elsewhere, uh, for example, in fire and rescue services, which you've seen have been accounted for. Uh, in specific grants to them. And, and then there are other functions as well. Uh, but there are things which councils are doing, uh, uh, which is entirely of their own uh, volition. As I say, I support, I support councils uh, making those decisions. But as you can imagine, it, it is only fair that central government supports things which are open to all, uh, rather than individual choices by local councils. And if any um, council yeah. uh, leader or officer is watching these proceedings, and is uncertain, then, as I always say, I would strongly encourage them to contact uh, MHCLG. All councils right. have regular contacts with the department and discuss any of those issues. We wouldn't want anyone right. to labour under a false impression that uh, what they were doing is uh, guaranteed to be funded by uh, central government. So that's there in May 2020. So we're right in the heat of the pandemic, right at the beginning. He was indeed community secretary. He was in charge of the budgets. He told a select committee that councils will not be reimbursed for COVID costs. Now, at the time, councils were facing a funding shortfall of £3.5 billion. They were forced to make up to 20% cuts in funding. That means that provisions for adult social care, provisions for education, parks, bin collection, a lot of it had to halt because he would not plug the gap made by COVID. Should we play the next clip? Yeah. Mm. I've tried to be very clear throughout that I made this decision entirely on the merits. I believe it was the right decision to approve the application. Uh, We can discuss that in greater detail if you wish, but it's set out in the decision letter and it's set out in more detail in the letter that I sent to you. I believe that there is, and I, I stand by this, a generational challenge across the country, and in particular in London, to build more homes, homes of all types and tenures, including more affordable homes. And if we're going to do that, then it's right that we prioritise brownfield sites. And if we're going to build upwards, it's right to prioritise those parts of the capital and the country where there are existing clusters of high-rise buildings. And so on the merits of this particular application, it seemed to me after a thorough decision-making process that it was right to approve it. So that's uh, Robert Jenrick there 
talking in a select committee in June of 2020, so that's a month later, about how he ha had helped a developer avoid paying the council £45 million pounds by expediting a £1 billion pound planning project. So that £45 million pounds was a new levy that was introduced by the council so that if you were a big developer and you were, I guess, quote unquote, gentrifying an area, you would give money to the council to make sure that there were provisions for local people or there would be money that would go be fed back into the community. Robert Jenrick, as a minister, actively starved the council of £45 million. Pounds. Mm. Now, the final one is just a letter that was written in August of 2019 by Hackney Council, and they were facing some of the biggest cuts in the country. They called on Robert Jenrick to increase the funding. I mean, like they, they were they were hemorrhaging money. Their funding had been reduced by £140 million pounds in a decade. So on account for inflation, yeah, and just general shit getting more expensive going up, their funding was reduced mm. by £140 million. Pounds. It meant that for every Hackney resident, £520 had been cut provision-wise. What did Robert Jenrick do? Tell us. Nothing. Fuck. Nothing! D dude, this is very symptomatic of... <clears throat> it's the theory of politics popularised. It's taken the nation by storm by our um, friend, Councillor Tom Jones. It's hot dog politics in that... In the, um, it's, it relates to the sketch from I Think You Should Leave. I would imagine every single one of our audience has seen I Think You Should Leave, given that they're all men under 30. Mm. But the idea being <clears throat> a, car, a hot dog car crashes into a clothes shop, looking around to see who did this, and it's a man wearing a hot dog costume asking, we've got to find out who did this. Mm -hmm. It's real, like, it's, it's, he's, <laughs> he's guilty. But like, when I get to the bottom of who's ruined these councils, <laughs> God, they're in trouble. <laughs> but equally, it's, it's him standing for, there's, it suggests that Jenrick's going to go for a leadership challenge at some point, whether that's post-Sunak or, or post-election, pre-election. Lost a lot of weight. We are talking on his, about his glow-up recently. Jenrick's looking good. Has to be said. Fair mm. play to him. Mm. And Haircut, new suit, the lot. But, Erica, but he, he, can, he can say all this and have absolutely no culpability for it. Mm. It's, quite, it's quite like, he's allowed to say this and nothing will change, but he looks good for having said it. Mm. And he will not get, and because he's not in the government anymore, people won't be like, what the fuck, Robert? This is you, mm. brother. And because he wasn't a sec of state per se, he was only the minister responsible for the funding. <laughs> um, what could I have done? A lowly yeah. minister. I wasn't the hot dog, I was the bun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I got quite a bit of an eyebrow raise this morning because I said, Robert, I can imagine why certain factions, Star Chambers, would like to get behind Robert Jenrick because Suella Braverman has proved herself to be not capable of leading a faction. Uh, did you listen to the speech she gave last week in the Commons about why we sh should vote against the Rwanda bill, why it needed to be tougher? Mm -hmm. Did you think it was any good? It wasn't compelling at all, no. There was mm -hmm. a couple of examples and that was it. It didn't fire you up? No, it didn't grab me. I don't <laughs> think it grabbed anyone in the chamber either, actually. And well, you were willing to be convinced. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was just sitting there. Preaching to the converted at that point. Listen, they've been giving you a bad time, Suella. <laughs> Let me hear me. you. I'm open to your ideas. I'm a listener. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a listener, Home Secretary. Poor delivery. She also does make, she, she's proved to make incredible mistakes that have been seriously damaging to the conservative brand, such as saying homeless people should not have their tents. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've managed to damage the conservative brand right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, shall we do citizenship test? Please. Let's, um, yeah, we thought it would be a laugh to do some questions from the British citizenship test as two British citizens and one not. Um, Lord, did you, did you do the questions? Shall I, yeah, shall I be question master? Or do you want to be question master as not a British citizen? And you can put yeah. us on two British But then he might want to come here. Yeah, they should say, then we're helping him out. <laughs> <laughs> then we're helping him out if you'd ever want to be Thank converted. You Oh, we didn't bow to the king. Oh, also very quickly, um, Your Majesty. <laughs> what, you, you, you have to bow if, to him because of if, his uh, just in case prostate he, exam. In case he's watching, we're, we're, we think, we think uh, the king and queen might watch the podcast. Ah. So, Nothing to suggest they don't. Yeah. Well, that's true. They haven't yeah. actively said they don't watch it. So, mm -hmm. I think, so thank you very much for watching. Um, it's a real privilege to have you guys on board. Yeah, thank um, you. Let us know how often you get nooned. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think if, I, th I think 
we shouldn't make Sean bow to the king and queen. I think that'd be rude. Nor will I. No, nor will you. No matter how hard you try it. <laughs> Go on. Uh, what about no, to, um, no. Ozone. Is there anyone in the royal family, dead or alive, that you would have bowed to? Diana, probably. Mm. Mm. That's quite recent. I thought you were going to have to go like way back to like pre Cromwell. Yeah, you see, I, I can't see any of them justifying a bow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think pre or post. Aristocracy adjacent, I'd probably bow to like Sir Walter Raleigh for bringing Irish potatoes man. and um, tobacco. tobacco here. A good Irishman was Sir Walter Raleigh. Would you bow to him? Mm -hmm. He was from Northern Ireland, I believe. Really? Yeah. Good for him. Didn't Would you that. bow to him? You don't need yeah, to. Yeah, well, though. I suppose he brought potatoes and invented the bike. <laughs> I don't want to be a dick. You know, you say he's from Northern Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of um, Dunlop, the rally cyclist. What? <laughs> You're thinking of a, a professional cyclist? A professional cyclist. Not Walter Raleigh. Dunlop, was he a... Um, was he a motorcyclist or a I've no like a idea what you're about. Well, like the sports brand. He was from Northern Ireland. And you, you, you mixed him up with Walter Raleigh. Walter Raleigh. You're a, okay, you're a, a bike moron. of similar I bike did, I, I was thinking like this is the woman who brought like tobacco to Elizabeth I. Are you sure? Let's have a look. So I I don't know enough about Walter Raleigh. I I was hook line and sinker there. I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope, he was definitely not. Wellington Irish. was Irish. Wasn't huh? it? Wellington was Irish, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Sick. Got that one. Mm. Point to me for the British citizenship test. Should we crack on with the? Who, who do I'm you like? Would you bow for Braveheart? Braveheart wasn't king. No, I mean, would you bow for the film Braveheart? <laughs> 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 yes. Thank you, Mel Gibson. <laughs> I don't know if it's apocryphal, but seemingly the Wallace Monument in Stirling was refashioned to look like Mel Gibson after the, that film came out. Really? I don't know if that's true, though. But Mel Gibson's kind of an everyman, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. To half of the population of the he's world. He's not like distinctive, distinctive, is he? No, he's not a Barry Kay. Joey Dunlop was a Northern Irish motorcyclist. <laughs> when was he alive? Oh, quite recently. Okay, like so, so you're so off. Yeah, so you, okay. But you thought that was the man who brought <laughs> tobacco here. I mixed him up with, because rally, rally bikes. So. Just, like, I, I, that just isn't a big enough brand to, mi <laughs> to like, mix that up with. <laughs> I think it's just one of those, you know, it's those things quite that you carry. obscure sports brands. Yeah. Dunlop and rally. Yeah. But you know those things Babala you carry through your... <laughs> Yeah, you carry it through your childhood that you just mix two people into one. You regularly mixed up Sir Walter. No, Raleigh it was just something I Dunlop. must have thought when I was a child, and I've carried it until now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now it's been, it's been new out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Got him, boys. <laughs> Did Nudie make a noise? I can't remember. Yes. <laughs> no, it was far. <laughs> it was far. Cruder than that, wasn't I it? I can't wait for Ollie to ask how the podcast went. <laughs> me. You know, I think me, me, me. made like a, a slurping noise. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Is he ate the custard and stuff? Yes. Well? Yes. Me? Oh yes. <laughs> he ate the Tommy custard. Uh, did it actually? Yeah. Do, like, oh, the, the custard. Yeah, yeah. That was sick. You used to be able to buy that. Yeah, they, I, I think I had it. I think it was Megan. Tubby Toast. How do you spell Nunu? <laughs> N-U-N-U, obviously. It's, that's someone who doesn't have a Nunu. <laughs> <laughs> this one's like, oh, here he is. <laughs> I don't know how this... <laughs> Can you hear it? I heard that, yeah. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. You're giving me flashbacks. <laughs> It's like a Manchurian candidate thing. <laughs> Me and Sean go limp. <laughs> All the colour just goes from our face. Just right. Gurgling. Okay. Let's do the citizenship test. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to do, can we do one question each? Do you turn about or do you want us to go for a question at the same time? Um, I'll ask the question. Oh my god, you've got the questions. I yeah. was reading discussion cues and I was trying to answer <laughs> yeah. I was um, like, what? Do you want us to do a buzzer? 
Would that be the best way? I don't know. Or would I'm it trying, be? I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, think it could be a. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get it particularly quick, so there's no need to. <laughs> we'll just go. Uh, if we. Well, so you're going. Uh, yeah, uh, I think if you do an. Uh, I think you'll be able to tell the difference. I'm going to go. Ding. And you do an like a new news. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> okay, who is the first British Prime Minister? <laughs> Walpole? You're dead, right? Shit. Sir Robert Walpole. Just fucking get one. Which two British kings fought in the Battle of the Roses? Uh, Henry the Seventh. Mm-hmm. Richard the... Third? You're dead right. Is it? Yeah, is it? You're what dead you? right. Richard III, Henry VII. Uh, who was the first Briton to win the Olympic gold medal in the 10,000 meters? <laughs> <laughs> Mo Farah. Yes. It's odd, it? I that? thought we were talking about swimming. That's why I The 10,000 meters <laughs> swimming. <laughs> 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 So we're in day four of the <laughs> the open water swimming here. The, Olympics. Went, Michael Phelps. <laughs> the closing ceremony has passed. The Paralympians are waiting at the other end. Uh, name a Gilbert and Sullivan opera. Any. <laughs> Paris of Bazant. Yeah, there isn't there isn't actually an answer here. I can, I can name you more if you want. I'm I'll take your word. Roger Gore. Um who can get a fifty percent discount on their TV license? <laughs> <laughs> Old people. <laughs> Who was first there? I went <laughs> slightly before, I think. Yeah, yeah, but... You're wrong with old people. Really? Low income earners? Blind people. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they don't use half of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting half the use out of the TV. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's quite economical. That was quite ableist. When was this? <laughs> What's the score? How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Three. One. You've had three. You've had two. I have not had. No, three. you've not had three. What are you I think you got. About? You got Walpole. You got Henry. I, I got Mo Farah. You got Mo Farah. <laughs> you got Opera. It's three one. Yeah. Neither of you. Yeah, three one. You got some work to do. <laughs> When was the Scottish Parliament established? Oh come on, that's unfair. Nineteen seven. No, ninety nine. No, no, no. You can't. You can't. You, you can't jump in. I have to take in. your first answer. You can't jump in like that. Sorry, take your first you answer. Like if you're on tipping point and you said nineteen ninety seven, he's done the, the thing. Fence. He's done the me. thing. It would be the same time that the Scottish, the what's it called, was signed, right? The Act of Union. The Good Friday Agreement. <laughs> the Good I don't Friday know, Agreement. I don't, I don't no, I'm panicking mean. because I was going to say 90... Uh, well, I won't say it because it would be my answer. Okay, 99. Yeah, 99. 3, 2. I was going to say... Um, I felt it was 97. Yeah, it was That's a, a Good Friday the, Agreement. It was also the referendum. There was a referendum on it. Right. That's what I was confused about. In which century did Protestant ideas begin to spread? <laughs> Um, 17th. No. Nope. Yes, what? <laughs> 16th. Yeah. No way. Yes, it was, because it was Elizabeth I and I was, she came off the throne in yeah. 1603. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so annoying. I knew that. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I knew because it's written here. <laughs> she came off the throne at 1603. That's so annoying. What were supporters of Parliament during called during the English Civil War? <laughs> mm -hmm. Roundheads. Yeah. What's that now? 4-2? A uh, five two five two. Yeah, he's bossing me. Yeah, who wrote the Canterbury Tales? <laughs> Chaucer. Yeah, you're bloody quick, aren't you? Fucking yeah. Well okay. done. Well done, Ed. S you get to stay here forever. <laughs> what I it was very fun. Isn't like it's interesting about the ideas they have about assimilation, as in how important it is. like Gilbert and Sullivan are very influential comic operatists, mm -hmm. but how crucial are they that you know about them too? Assimilate into British life. How like are you less British because you don't know a Gilbert You're clearly more opera. British than Ava. Oh, by my evidence yeah. after that. He's just a lot quicker than me as well. Mm -hmm. I need a minute. You know? I need can't, to can't have one. He really got that Nunu suck sound <laughs> down. That's, yeah. that's yeah. half the battle, really. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I, I'm so used to hearing it. I was just doing You're just it. Just channeling. I was just it, doing yeah. it. Like, oh shit, I need to answer now. <laughs> um, what do we think that says about British people? Um, I can. Okay, the the Canterbury Tales and Chaucer, I can kind of understand because that's like proper linked into like the Christian country, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty important to the cathedral down there and all that. Mm -hmm. But um. I don't know. Is your answers? Where were the questions? Are they? Uh, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? I don't know about Gilbert and Sullivan. I don't actually know who that is. It's I thought you were talking to start with about Simon and Garfunkel. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I actually really like Gilbert and Sullivan. Is my I thought it was like an SNL esque thing, Gilbert and oh, Sullivan, like, uh, Gilbert Gottfried or something like that. Yeah, that. maybe. No, it's um, they wrote similar to how I've mistaken. Joey Dunlop for <laughs> Sir Walter Raleigh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't you're ever getting yeah. They wrote like um, they, they wrote comic operas in the 19th century, um, and they wrote things like Radigor, HMS Pinafore. So the meatloaf of their time. The meatloaf of their time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just battered hell over and over. <laughs> um, I, I really like them. I think the music's excellent, and would recommend any Gilbert and Sullivan to any budding Brit or current Brit or mm. anyone at all. Mm. Um, yeah. Is, are we done? Have we got anything else to add? War of the Roses. How important was that? Actually, pretty Quite, important. Yeah, yeah, very. We could still be a Catholic country without that. Because mm. it wouldn't have been Henry VIII. It ain't over yeah. yet. It ain't over yet. Yeah. It ain't over yet. <laughs> you, think, you think there might be a Catholic <laughs> restoration <laughs> of the monarchy? Listen, anything's possible. They're not going to go back to the Catholics now. No, they can't. No. Well, they will, you can't because it's the Church of England. Yeah, it'd be C of E or nothing now, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, they have to get rid of the Church of England as well, mm. or right. or change change who the governor is. Yeah, mm. change who the what? Governor of the Church of England is the king. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> your pope. <laughs> I'm not anything. Yeah, I'm oh, not anything. Are you not? Are you not? Do you not go to CV school in Scotland? <laughs> 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 All Scottish children are just seething the whole way through their education. <laughs> There's an English missionary in every school in Scotland. I, we, we, I, we talked about this today. I said I went to a school, like a Church of Scotland school. That's so funny. Okay. On that bombshell, um, I hope you've got your new new strapped tight as you tuck into bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Um, and make sure, yeah, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, watch all our other content, <laughs> rate, and, rate and reviews, mm. send us an, a DM. Ollie's on admin this week. So just email Ollie about complaints about this episode. Yeah. Thank you. To, thank you. Don't everyone for, send me a DM. No. DM Sean. DM Ollie. Don't DM me an Ava. <laughs> Nobody DMs me. <laughs> DM Sean. DM Sean. Sean should get 10 DMs by the end of the week. Yeah, I'm roll. expecting them now. And it, they should always be photos of Nunu. <laughs> <laughs> AI generated images of getting Nunu. Um, thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you all on Wednesday.